What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video and we are talking about the Warden Walk. It is a Town Hall 12 strategy that is used in various different uh, ground heavy attacks and we're going to talk about uh, why it's effective, show some examples because not everyone's heard of the Warden Walk, not everyone's seen it in action. Got two attacks to take a look at today from this war. I'll talk about the war uh, in a little bit, but um, let's get right into our first attack here. The Warden Walk is like a Queen Walk, but you use your Warden with uh, four healers and the Warden is typically, you know, you think he just kind of follows troops around, but if he's kind of the only you know, main thing that's been placed, if there's no other uh, big groups of troops that have been deployed, he kind of does his own thing. He's not going to worry about what the baby dragons are doing. And in some sense, his pathing is more predictable than that of uh, the queen because, um, you know, he targets the closest thing and he has an incredibly uh, bigger range than the queen does. So he can reach things, and we'll see this in the next attack especially, he can reach things that are otherwise protected from a queen walk. Um, and uh, once you deploy your main uh, force of troops, he kind of just peels off and supports them. So it's like a queen walk, but there's certain benefits that you don't get uh, from a queen walk that you do get from the warden walk. So you can see in this one, we have a hound in the CC, and because of that, you know, goes ahead and just sueys the queen up at the top to create a funnel. The warden creates the funnel on the other side. That's a great uh, use of the warden walk is he can create a funnel on one side, kind of like a queen walk. There's some overlap there in terms of the, the benefit. Um, and then he follows the troops into the base. Lava Hound's not going to pop the entire attack because nothing uh, is going to target it now that the queen is down. Um, so yeah, it... In this case, you know, instead of doing the queen walk that leads into the uh, kill squad and having to worry about the um, lava hound popping and all that stuff, just goes ahead and sues the queen and uses the warden walk in her place. Um, so this is a uh, there's there's different reasons to use it, um, but this is a good a good use uh, a good example of a use where you don't want to have the queen actually enter the base. This was a a uh, very heavy kill squad hog attack, by the way, as you can see the hogs sweep through the remainder of the base. But yeah, in this case, you know, you don't want to uh, use the queen in the kill squad. So uh, you sue her and you still want to get the value of a funnel and still have the value of healers, but get a little bit extra value for those healers. In addition to them just kind of following the P.E.K.K.A.s into the base, you can get some uh, value if you team them up with the warden initially and get uh, the funnel taken, uh, the funnel created on one side, and also some extra defensive buildings taken out uh, before you even push into the base. I mean, that's free troop space. Those healers are going to be used anyway. Might as well get a little bit of value at the beginning of the attack from them uh, by using them on the warden. And you can you notice that uh, sometimes we we'll have to use the rage spell because the warden is slow and he doesn't have as much hit points as the queen, uh, so he can get low pretty fast. Sometimes you're going to have to use one rage to keep him up and just to increase the amount of damage he does because he doesn't do a lot of damage and he can take too much time otherwise. But often that one rage investment is well worth it for what you get. Um, we're going to take a look at one more attack, a few words on this war because it was a big war for us, didn't go so well. Um, this was a CWL playoff war and uh, a few different things. I mean, it was kind of a lackluster performance by our 11s and it kind of affected the 12s to some extent, but... Um, they had a great war. You can see they put up some good numbers on us. Uh, just left one base uh, untripled there. Um, obviously, these, you know, if it was probably a little closer at the end, these could have been two star at least. Um, we're a little bit short attacks, but um, also I think we left an 11. Uh, one of our, I think, uh, players like fell asleep or something weird like that, so he wasn't even uh, attacking, so we lost two Town Hall 12 hits that way, but. Um, I mean, excuses are excuses. It, we were going to lose this war uh, regardless of that stuff, but I guess that explains why it was such a big difference in stars. Um, so hopefully next season we can kind of rebound, but we made the playoffs, which is something to be proud of. Uh, not every clan does that. This next one was a, a different type of Warden Walk. Eight healers. That's um, not something we see very often, especially in successful 12v12 attacks. Um, so first of all, you still have to funnel the warden. Um, he's going to behave like any other troop uh, that doesn't have doesn't have a 
building preference, he'll target the nearest building to him. So you can see uh, as the simple wizard will take out these army camps and will create the funnel for the Grand Warden and uh, put the healers down on him. Four healers is plenty usually. Um, you're not going to have him charging into the base and he tends to keep his distance so you don't have to worry about um, him like running up too close and engaging the king anything like that. But this is interesting. uses the queen walk on the opposite side. So both a queen walk and a warden walk going here. And we'll see um, in just a moment some of the value that the warden can get that the queen otherwise won't get. I love that balloon on the cannon right there. It funnels the queen. It also uh, is going to uh, lure a little bit of the CC. And you can see uh, if we watch the warden, first of all, let me pause just because a lot of things are happening. Rage him up. Um, he's taking Damage, like I said, doesn't have a lot of hit points, so having two or three defensive building up, buildings on him, you notice it more than you do with the queen, where she goes down much slower in hit points. But check this out. Um, his next target is going to be that multi-inferno. Um, that is something the queen would otherwise not be able to reach, but the warden can reach it. So it gets a free inferno. Uh, the rage also helps him uh, do more damage. And you can see now that all the troops have been deployed, as long as it's like relatively close to him, I'd say a good uh, reference point is it's within his damage radius, which is actually visible. You can see that little aura around him. That's the uh, kind of his zone where he can help the hit points of troops, his tome covers, and also his, his range... Uh, in terms of attacking, uh, if you deploy you know, most of your troops close to that, if not in it, he will kind of peel off and just help those troops. So still going to get the value from his tome. The healers are going to switch on to the bowlers. So it's basically free, uh, a free Inferno Tower and a bunch of defenses and a funnel, a very good funnel at that, got a, a you know, really deep funnel with that Inferno going down uh, for pretty much for free because those healers are going to uh, be used on the kill squad on the P.E.K.K.A.s uh, that's already like value from them. So having the warden uh, walk at the beginning or just spending a rage or maybe spending an extra 30 seconds, but that's stuff you can afford to to spend in order to get that value. It's definitely a good trade. Meanwhile, the queen's doing her thing on the outside of the base, avoiding that lava hound. Um, that's a big, big value point is not having to you know deal with the lava hound. Nothing's going to target it, it looks like. Uh, because the queen's on the outside doing her thing. Slammer's going to roll up the other side of the base, and you can see this is going to be an overpowering attack here. Um, you know, troops just spilling through the base, has the slammer up. Uh, it's going to, I think the loons are going to come out now, um, get some more value. Uh, queen's ability, healers are switching. There's healers all over the place, there's troops all over the place. Um, has a nice haste spell for those balloons. And uh, this is GG. We will fast forward here as everything moves through. Uh, Lava Hound will pop, it looks like, but the Baby Dragon and the Queen deal with most of the pups. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Just two attacks to take a look at. Um, obviously, you know, we weren't the clan putting up all these 12v12s like they were, and they were using more Lalo, but I think uh, it, it means something that, you know, the two triples we got were using this, uh, this Warden Walk strategy. So be sure to check it out. Um, just take some practice, you know, getting used to how the warden behaves, when to use him, when not. But um, he can get, get you some funnels that the queen otherwise can't get. And oftentimes you'd rather use your queen to suey or some other type of uh, use for the queen rather than doing the walk. Sometimes the warden is a better candidate. He moves a little bit slower. He might take an extra rage, but he can um, get value that the queen can't get. So... That'll do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.